The Orville Season 3, also known as The Orville New Horizons, has just finished airing all of its episodes on Hulu. I'm here to give my thoughts on the overall season, the finale, and my predictions of Season 4, if we get it. Spoilers, you have been warned. This season to me is the best season of the show so far. I was blown away by the storytelling, the drama, and just how the show really became, I think, what it was intended to be. Because at the beginning of the Orville, it had more comedic elements and it made sense. But over time, getting into season two, it found more of a balancing act and went more towards focusing on the story and the drama side of things. And now with this season, there are comedic moments for sure. But my God, the storytelling really stepped it up quite a bit. It's pretty clear they got a bigger budget for this season, but on top of that, the fact that they were on Hulu was a major bonus. It's pretty clear that the Orville was always intended to be a streaming show, or at least a platform that allowed them to have extended runtime on episodes, because the shortest episode of the Orville New Horizons is at an hour. When the show was airing on Fox, the runtime was always around 42 to 44 minutes, roughly in that area because they had to follow broadcast standards and they had to deal with commercials, so they couldn't do extended episodes. This show benefited so much, I think, from a couple of things. Like I was mentioning, number one, the fact that they were on a streaming service, longer episodes. But number two, I really felt that with the higher budget, they were able to tell more grand stories. And it really benefited them because this season was just insane in terms of what they covered compared to previous seasons. Which makes sense in terms of a budgetary thing you have to think of, other storylines. But they really elevated it here for sure. Let's jump into spoilers. Number one, let's talk about a wedding that I thought would never occur on this show, and they pulled it off, and they waited till the last episode of this new season, New Horizons, to give it to us, which of course is Claire and Isaac's wedding. I really thought we would never get to this point where Isaac actually proposes to Claire, of course, in his own reasons of why he does it, not because he actually has feelings for her. He, he does, I think, but not to the point where he can actually express it because he... He, he wasn't built that way. And I feel like, you know, maybe down the road, because they did hint at some things in terms of certain storylines that potentially he could get feelings, because he did at one point, but maybe something will occur like that. But I honestly thought we would never get to the point where Claire and Isaac actually continue past a certain point in their relationship. But I was dead wrong. And what a way to do it. I mean, literally, this could have been a part of another storyline, but they basically gave the majority of this last episode, of course, we had other stuff going on, really dedicated to this moment. And even on top of this wedding, they gave us something that I wasn't even thinking about. People were speculating that we were going to be seeing this character, but I'm thinking at a certain point, I'm like, they're probably not going to bring her back. Alara shows up and surprised the hell out of me. I actually was standing up, walking around, and when this scene popped up, I'm like, what? I'm like, no, it's Alara. And it was. I'm like, holy crap. I genuinely got really excited because I, I missed this character so much. It really goes to show their mindset in regards to having this be the last episode of the show because episode 9, Domino, felt like a season finale in terms of this new season. But instead, they said, let's actually make this particular moment between these two characters we've been kind of building up over time. Let the wedding be the last thing because realistically, this could have happened earlier in the season, but they decided to wait and have it be the last thing we see in regards to the show. Hopefully not the last thing ever, but in terms of this season. But yeah, pretty crazy. The second thing I want to talk about, once again, spoilers, Charlie Burke, the new character introduced in the Orville New Horizons. I'm not going to lie to you guys. When they first introduced Charlie, I didn't like her at all, but I understood her stance and why her character was put into the show in regards to being on the Orville because of what happened during the Kalon War with someone she really cared about, died, and sacrificed herself to save Charlie. I understood her stance, but I still didn't like her. But by the end of Domino, when she makes that sacrifice and basically causes a whole shift in regards to the Kalon relationship with everybody else in the galaxy, in the known galaxy, it really is kind of impressive how they pulled this off. The writers behind the Orville do a great job with handling characters, so I knew this wasn't going to be the case, but at one point I was worried that Charlie Burke might end up being a one-dimensional character, but I was completely wrong because holy crap, I really enjoyed seeing her on the show as the show was progressing and everything. And her decision, just the beauty of how they pulled this off, her decision and her sacrifice in the episode Domino, it's so insane that that decision, that sacrifice that she made, is now got to the point where the Kalon are part of the Planetary Union. Like, that is insane to me. It's unfortunate the character's gone, but her impact will last for a long time. Like Isaac said during her funeral, her uh, memorial uh, service they had on the Orville for her, she is going to be remembered for a long time for what she did. The third thing I want to talk about is actually the true villains of the show in terms of moving forward because I thought 
once we saw what happened in season two in terms of the Kalon, that the Kalon were actually going to be the true villains for the remainder of the series in regards to they are the main threat. No, they're not. They're actually not. It's pretty insane. It's actually the united front of the Krill and Mocklins. I did not expect this at all because Mocklins, of course, are known for disregarding any woman, no matter what alien species they are. They don't trust any of them and don't regard them in the same level as themselves. So I didn't think this was actually going to occur. But the fact that the Krill have been enemies against the Planetary Union for the longest time since the show started and the Mocklins have always had issues. Of course, we saw what happened. I think it was the second episode of season one with Topa and everything. We saw how that kind of unfolded and how that's kind of you know, been a storyline throughout the, the, the seasons in regards to female Mocklins and all that. I, I just didn't see it coming that Mocklins were going to be, you know, kicked out of the planetary unit and they would just team up with the Krill. I didn't expect that at all, but here we are. So now that alliances have shifted, the question is, how big of an impact is this really going to have on the planetary union, on the Orville itself, and just the galaxy as a whole? Because who knows what other potential, like, planets and races of aliens that are a part of the planetary union that will maybe leave to join this new you know united front over here with these two like big races of people like one actually being a part of the planetary union and one that's always had issues and was against everything they stood for so it's gonna be interesting to see what happens if we get that season four the fourth and final thing i want to talk about briefly before getting into my season four predictions if we get season four is Ed and Kelly holding hands during the wedding. Now, this could easily just chalk up to they were just in the moment, but I don't know. I feel like this show is setting that up in terms of a long game for them to get back together. Like, they've been putting stuff in place in regards to certain storylines, certain reveals in regards to Kelly cheating on Ed. That was, like, the first thing we saw at the very beginning of the show, and we find out that that alien, I know it's played a Rob Lowe, I don't remember the character's name, had some sort of pheromones around the time where she was just finding him so irresistible that she really couldn't control herself because we saw Ed doing the same thing to him later on in the Orville. So the implication is that maybe there is something still there. And I think that that's been a long game they've been setting up since the beginning. So we'll see what happens if we get a season four between them. Now getting into my hopes for season four, I have a couple of different things I want to mention. Of course, number one, I want season four of the Orville. That's pretty obvious. This season has been so freaking good. It's been so fantastic that I need more story. There are definitely more stories to tell. They've proven that every single episode of New Horizons. There are definitely more characters to explore, new worlds, and just overall just new alliances and rivalries and all that kind of stuff. There's so many things they could cover because they did so much within these 10 episodes. I think one major storyline we're going to be following is Isaac learning to adapt to being a married man. Of course, this is going to be very interesting because Isaac doesn't understand truly what needs to be done in regards to being a husband. He just has information on it. He doesn't know to actually how to imply it in terms of imp like doing it. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. I feel like there's going to be some rocky steps between Claire and him, but I don't know. Maybe she'll be more understanding because she realizes that the man I married, the man, the being, the entity, robot, whatever, the Kalon I married, he's not like a traditional, like, human like me, so it's it's going to be a very different approach. And I felt like that was pretty apparent during the wedding in terms of his speech back to her, so who knows? I can see this both ways because on one hand, I understand having Alara at the wedding at the very end was kind of a little nod to all the fans to kind of see that character again, and they mentioned again, of course, she can't leave her planet that much per year. But maybe on the other hand, maybe they're implying that maybe she'll be popping up a little more, maybe through some video messages or maybe even go back to her home world. I'm not really sure, but maybe there's some sort of implication that maybe they could do that because I do miss the Alara character and maybe they could explore more of that in regards to just bringing her character around. I'm not saying that she goes on the Orville and she's back on the ship. I'm just saying maybe there's more they could do with that character. I think it's very apparent with the Krill and Mocklins teaming up that we're going to see more of them being a threat against the planetary unit. And like I was mentioning a little bit earlier, I do think they're going to try to sway some other people and other, you know, planets, essentially a part of the planetary union to like leave and to join them. I feel like it's going to be a political thing and maybe an actual all out war in terms of because we saw, of course, big war go down in, in Domino, but I feel like. It, there may be some more stuff going on in regards to building up to something pretty intense. Uh, because it's pretty clear Krill and Mocklins, they want to go against everybody else. I mean, just it's clear that they have a power thing that they want to go for in regards to probably taking the Planetary Union down. So I feel like 
they're going to be setting that up in season four. That's the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm curious to know what you guys thought about the Orville New Horizons. What were some of your favorite moments? What are your predictions for season four? If we get a season four of the show, let me know in the comments below, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out.